Well, as a historian of science, what I'm trying to do is get a truer, more accurate depiction of the past. In particular, how scientific ideas developed, where they came from, who developed them, and why. And this has a number of applications. On the one hand, just getting a better idea about how science develops in the past tells us a little bit more about science nowadays. And today, science is absolutely everywhere around us. We can't go two steps without running into science and technology. Scientists themselves should be interested in this because on the one hand, it tells us more about how our ancestors were involved in the same kind of process as we are, about trying to understand the world that we live in, trying to manipulate it, trying to use it for valuable ends. It also has the benefit of helping students. I think far too often we give young students a very false idea of what you have to do to do science. We make it very sterile and very uh, cerebral, uh, very theoretical, that you have to be some sort of genius to get involved with uh, doing something significant in science. The history of science tells us instead that what the development of science is about, it's about fallible individuals, people of all kinds, just trying to ask questions about the world, trying to understand them. I think uh, making science too forbidding, um, something that just the few geniuses do, d uh, dissuades people, dissuades students from going into the science. But we need more people in the sciences, and I think we give them a more honest depiction of what scientific development is like will have more success. My name is Larry Principe. I'm a professor of the history of science and technology and a professor of chemistry at Johns Hopkins University.